but we'll start off the day. Uh, we'll just go through um, just some of the basics and basic terminology and, and so on as far as USD is concerned. Yeah, and once I show you this, there's a USD concept and what you're picking up on the bars. So you talk a little bit about the metals. Um, well, USD, it stands for Universal Scene Description, and that's exactly what it is. Yeah, in my USD, the Universal Scene Description, you know, so if you're familiar with Alembic, um, it sort of takes that all of that a step further. Um, it's a file format that describes a scene graph like you see here. And what's nice about using USD is it describes geometry, animation, lights, cameras, and shaders. Um, and those USD files, it can, the USD files can um, reference other USD files, they can reference Alembic files, um, you can composite those USD files on top of one another. And also, those USD files can actually contain the geometry of the data themselves. So, what's nice about it um, in terms of, of big pipelines and so on is that it's a single place where you can, decide, you can describe your entire scene in one open file form. So we're gonna we're gonna describe or we're gonna we're gonna walk through and talk about some of these concepts today. So if you look at this sort of image on the right here, the idea is that um, all of these different departments um, and so on, or, or different phases of the pipeline, can have their own USD layer associated with them. Um, so that means you know each shot can be described in a single file, um, but then that file can be referencing uh, a particular department, like as you see in the graph here. We have uh, different layers for each department. So what that means is, is the way USD layers work, they, they act very much kind of like Photoshop layers. So just to talk about uh, a little bit about the graph that you see here on the right, um, let's say there's a layout USD file that comes from the layout department. Well, that file itself can reference assets that are USD assets. And then on top of that, you would layer an animation USD scene or USD file that might have some characters and some character animation in them. And then on top of that, there might be an effects layer or an effects USD layer. And so that effects layer might take something from the layout department and maybe add some destruction to it or something like that. And so the nice thing about working this way, you know, you then have a lighting USD file on top of that. And so every artist has access to every layer of the shot um, at all times. So it's just it's it's great for collaboration. It's great for um, if you imagine uh, a layout artist can see 
what the lighting looks like at any point. So let's talk about a few uh, important terms with uh, USD. So the first one is layer. I'll, I'll be saying that a lot. I'll say it all day long. And the layer is is a file on disk, so that means that layout USD is a layer, but so are the assets underneath. Those are also layers, and that shot USD file is a layer. Uh, we're also going to talk about stage a little bit, and in fact, uh, in, when you're in Houdini and you're in Solaris, um, you go into the MOPS context, you're in the stage. And the stage is simply uh, where you compose all of these USD layers together to make a completed composition. Um, the next concept I'm going to mention is called composition arcs, and that's simply the different ways that we can combine these layers or parts of layers to build that stage. So the first one is called a sublayer. This is probably the one that you're going to hear the most and maybe use the most. So first, let's we'll we'll take a look at some uh, you know slides of examples and then we'll dive into the and we'll see how that works. So imagine you have two separate USD files. You have set A on the left and you have set B on the right. And you see, um, so each part of these trees have sort of a primitive path, very similar to a directory structure on your hard drive. So imagine here, um, what, what sublayering is going to look for when you sublayer things is it looks for a common primitive path or a common namespace. So on N set A, we have A1 and then A2, and underneath A2, we have Q1 and Sphere 1. And the same with set B. We have B1, B2 with Q1 and Sphere 1 under B2. So if we now sublayer these together in USD, then we simply get a union because there's nothing, there's no namespace in common there. So just a quick visual representation of that. Here's set A1 and has a red sphere and a red box. And set B looks like this. So we're, we're going to now combine these. And so um, I mentioned that in Solaris, we are working in what's called the stage. And so when we do that, we're always work, we're starting off at an empty root layer. 
In fact, when we dive into Houdini, you'll see that that's exactly what you see in the scene graph tree. It's a slash for the root layer. So once again, just to remind you, another important term is namespace. That's the path to the primitives in your scene graph. So all of these, these namespaces and that, that path to those primitives is going to become really important when you start uh, dealing with, with LOPs and sublayering and so on. So here again, we uh, start with an empty scene graph and then we sublayer in set A.USD, and this is what your scene graph looks like. And again, if we sublayer in set B, we get something that looks like this. But just looking a little closer at it, you can see where set A and set B, how it's contributing to that composed stage. So imagine now we have a third USD layer that we want to sublayer into our stage. So here we have set C, which has A2 and now B2 in it with Q2 sphere 1 and Q1 and sphere 1 underneath. So now, when we sublayer that into our existing stage, this is the result we get. And so, if we were to look at what is contributing, what what's coming from which um, file, we can see. So now, set C has a stronger opinion because as you sublayer things in. Just like Photoshop, you're putting that layer on top. So if you're looking at this, what is happening is set A1 is coming from our first USD layer, set A. As well as Q1 that is under A2. Everything else is coming from our third sublayer because it has a stronger opinion or it didn't exist before. If you're confused right now, don't worry about it. It'll become clearer as we start to do some examples. So uh, the next, uh, I, I've mentioned it once already, the next term that's important is called opinions. So basically, it, that's, it, it's sort of how it, it's what has a stronger opinion means um, either it's on top, it as you sublayer things in, and that has a it's higher up the opinion chain, and it overwrites the data underneath if it exists. So any object in your scene can be affected by any layer, um, and just think of it as Photoshop. Think of it as you add adjustment layers in Photoshop, um, it's, it sort of acts the same way. So here the, here's another look at uh, of what those how those opinions affect your stage or your composed stage. Um, so as you'll see, we have uh, lots of tools to help you figure all that out, um, and that's a look at your scene graph tree, and so that will help all this make sense. So. Um, 
分かりやすくして。